first two letters of GTR stand for Gran Turismo. Coincidentally, the first way we Americans learned about the GTR is because of Gran Turismo. Without even really exaggerating, this car is a reliable, powerful, and much more importantly, affordable way to drive a real race car on the street. This is Godzilla. Unfortunately for you, you're still human. Right, look at the speed of this car. And I'm not joking, it's one of the best cars. You know this story already. We've heard thousands of different videos of how the Nissan used to be a prince and then became a Nissan. That in which the Skyline GTR went racing and won every single race. 29 out of 29 races that it entered. This video is not going to be a history lesson. But you need this little refresher for what I'm about to tell you next. We've waited 25 long years to bring across from overseas what essentially is the video of Nissan. We watch video after video after video of YouTubers and content creators boosting these cars to hell and beating supercars for a fraction of the price. You need not to look under the YouTube and TikTok to see these cars pushing mad power. And even stock, it's not that bad. And everybody who drives this car will just tell you, it just feels special. You wouldn't think it's as old as it is. But unfortunately for me, this car was legal before I was legally able to drink. I think I need to back this up real quick because I had mentioned that it took 25 long years for us to get this car in the US. Why? Well, TLDR, there was this dude back in the 80s that figured out it was cheaper to import gray market Mercedes vehicles rather than just buying the ones in the US already. These cars were not only cheaper, they had some features that weren't even available in the US lineup, and they made more power. So after some 60,000 vehicles got sold here, Mercedes lost hundreds of millions of dollars in US sales. So what did they do? Well, they partnered with other manufacturers in the US in order to help pass the Imported Vehicle Safety Compliance Act, which essentially banned importing any vehicle that didn't meet the recently refreshed federal safety and emissions laws, which then also had you crash 10 units for your crash safety standards. Who do you know who can buy 10 of these, crash them, and also buy the one they want? I know my audience, four people, Sky, who dream of owning a Skyline or a Z432. I don't think I'll be lucky enough to even see one in my lifetime, but what's the next best thing? Well, it's the SS of Skylines, the GTT. And before you guys start commenting, oh my god, it's not a Nissan GTR, hear me out. Not every single Supra is a twin turbo. Not every single Mustang is a GT500. Not every Parker is a And this is the best one you want. R34 GTT is essentially the bargain sale of GTR. Rear wheel drive, single turbo, RB25. It has every bit of the sound that you're looking for. Lightweight and about 85% of the performance. This is a Skyline GTT, and it has a GTR front conversion, as they all do at this point. This car, just like every other Skyline, came with high cast, but unlike the R32 from earlier, this car has electronically controlled high cast instead of the hydraulically controlled high cast of yesteryear. It's run smoother, it's more predictable, and there's a million algorithms that the computer has already had programmed into it, so it feels super stable. Already a GTR trademark from the 32. Jackson, I'm gonna do that uh, that pull thing after this corner, okay? GTR, you're basically just paying for an objectively worse R35 at that price. Pretty much. Like R34 prices are now through the roof. Yeah. You're you're expected to pay like 150 to 200 grand for a 30 year old Nissan. And I don't know how I feel about that. I've seen them come down a little bit now that they're US legal and they're no longer unobtainium. Yeah. Uh, I've seen them as low as 110, 115. You know your standard Bayside Blue. 
And I have a big problem with this. I'm not saying that the Skyline is a underperforming car. It lives up to every bit of hype that everybody says about it. It drives exactly the way people say online. And if you get the chance to drive one, you'll agree. But I think the hype is overshadowing the car just the hair. Back when we picked up ours when they first became legal, it was about 35 grand plus import fees and things. We'll get to that later. But now the car itself are, is selling for over 80 grand easily and on a regular basis. And now the R34 is going for well into Lamborghini territory. Argue with me in the comments if you will, but I believe that 150 grand should get me more than just a base model GTR. I can justify a V-Spec, a Midnight Purple 2, uh, a Z-Tune, a 400R, any of those, I can justify those being a collector's item. I cannot justify a base GTR selling for six figures. That is just bonkers. There's a reason the Skyline is so important to us, but we as a car community and a group need to self-reflect. There's a saying from one of the animes I used to watch. By being put on a pedestal for long enough, you eventually become separated by the people who put you there in the first place. We're overhyping a 30-year-old Nissan. We GTR lovers fiend over the Skyline GTR to the point where we're too scared to even drive it. There are literal garages in Japan housing these cars, waiting to come to the US just because they know that we idiots are willing to pay $200,000 for a, and I quote, investment? We post video after video of these cars pushing 1,000 plus horsepower to the point where the hype is almost overshadowing the car itself. Not every Skyline pushes 1,000 horsepower. There were other Skylines involved. There was a regular people Skyline. There was a sporty-ish person Skyline. And then there was a racing Skyline. And unfortunately, now that we're coming up to it, there's an investor's skyline. In the left lane, the car came up, and she looked at me, and I waved, and she was like, hi. And then she came back on the other side of the lane, and she looked over, and she was like, what the fuck are you doing over there? I just I just love G like people who overhype the GTR, because you'll be minding your own business, doing what we're doing here, and you'll just see a guy come by like, oh my god. Everybody saw it back. So, as your resident Skyline lover, I'm more than happy to trade 0.1 liter of displacement and a one turbo for 85% of the fun. Leave the GTRs for those with big pockets. And besides, you'd have much more fun driving and owning a more reliable, fun to drive, and attainable dream car. Your car shouldn't be preserved for the next owner. It should be yours to enjoy. Matter of fact, go drive your Skyline away. I'm sorry, you spent your whole life saving up for a DTR. You're too old to even. so you made it to the end of the video so hopefully you guys enjoyed if you did make sure you hit that thumbs up button for the youtube algo and comment down below whether it be positive or negative because i need that youtube algo baby um let me know what else you'd like to see me review uh these two nissans were the first ones that i could possibly think of but if you want me to do something completely out of left field i'll do a review on a fiat i don't know um once again thanks guys um please subscribe share uh help me pay rent <laughs> Yeah, no, I don't know. Deuces!